there's no need to react. Back. That one. I'll probably get started in a few minutes.
Dial you back for more. <laughs> uh, I have a much smaller uh, crew of people in discrete math. Uh, there's only six students, I want to say, total. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. I'll probably get started in a, uh, in a few minutes. I'm just giving people an opportunity just in case because I just posted a bunch of reminders. discrete math students this is the beginning of the lesson I am going to uh, put timestamps into the description um, so that uh, whatever you need to see whatever you need to view after the fact of course you can see like all of my previous videos um, this lesson is entitled Euler paths and circuits is today. Oh, today's the 31st. My goodness. The longest month that ever existed. There you go. Um, in the description right now um, is a Google Doc, uh, PDF. I should say it's not really a Google Doc. It's a PDF of some examples that we will be doing um, later on. Uh, in this particular lesson, uh, so be aware of that. That uh, I have printed it out actually, uh, but I am going to be referencing some problems off of that worksheet later on. Um, if at any point you're watching this video after the fact, um, of course you can pause uh, certain aspects of it and try certain problems on your own. Uh, this prop, um, this video may have a bit of definitions uh, for you to write down, but we'll deal with that when the time comes. Uh, first, let's start with the village of Konigsberg. Uh, I totally misspelled that. There we go. Now it's correct. Um, Coensberg, Konigsberg, however the heck you want to pronounce it, is a real place. Um, in the discrete class, Google Classroom, I shared a video kind of giving a small introduction to the, uh, to the village of Konigsberg and its uh, geography. Um, one particular map of this town, and I'm, and I'm going to um, draw it the best that I can, has four specific land masses. Um, see, the village um, has multiple rivers running through it and with these multiple rivers there we go with these multiple rivers running through you have um, separate land masses and I'm going to label these land masses A B C and D 
Now, within this village, of course, you know, you have all the, all these rivers running through it. Um, these land masses are connected by bridges. There's a bridge. There's a bridge. There's a bridge. There's a bridge. There's another lovely bridge. There's one here, and there's one there. All in all, this village has seven bridges connecting its four different land masses. And it became kind of a um, game for the people in the village, where, you know, on a random afternoon, they would challenge themselves to see if they could cross every single one of the bridges exactly once. And this is something that tourists would come through and they would try it as well. Like, oh, here's the town challenge. Can you cross every bridge exactly once? Like, you can't repeat a bridge. And right now, you're watching this, you can try it on your own. Um, start wherever you want. It does not matter where you start. But start on one of the four landmasses and attempt to travel across every single bridge exactly once. You can't go over a bridge twice. Obviously, you can't swim across the water. Give it a shot. Um, I'll try it a few different ways. Uh, randomly, I'll start in the sea. Okay. And if I start in the sea, I can go here. And then here. And then here. And then here. And then here. Uh, oh, and there's my dilemma. I can't get back. Okay, let's try it somewhere else. Let's try it in a B. We'll start in B. And again, it doesn't matter where you end up. The, the general idea is, can you cross every bridge exactly once? In fact, let me just kind of write this off to the side. Here's the challenge. Uh, cross every bridge... exactly once. Doesn't matter where you start, doesn't matter where you end. Ah, there's Zach. What do you mean you were slumped? Does that mean you were asleep? I don't know. I'm giving people an opportunity to try the Coensburg Bridge Challenge. Sleep. Psh, sleep is for the weak. I was up at 5.30 with my daughter. Anyway, can you do it? Now, the short answer is you can try it every which way you want. Um, I, I don't, you cannot complete this challenge. No one can. No one can do this challenge. It seems like a very simple process. Cross every bridge exactly once. But you can't do it because you always get stuck somewhere and you always have to cross over a bridge a second time. For generations people just kind of took it like eh, no one will be, ever be able to do it but they could not explain why and then there was this mathematician his name was leonard euler if we were in my classroom right now i would point out his picture on the wall this name right here this is euler it's not pronounced euler it's euler that's how you pronounce it euler is arguably one of the top five greatest mathematicians in history, in all time. Um, Euler, there's so much attributed to his name that you probably have not ever been taught. Um, Euler has a number named after him in your calculator. Um, I haven't been able, I wasn't able to get to this lesson with my Algebra 2 students, but in the graphing calculator, I'll try to show it right there, it's not going to be focused very well. Maybe. Right there, there's that little E. That number is named for Euler. I kind of went down like that and showed you that E. Boom. That number, that constant is named for Euler. He's a very famous mathematician, one of the greatest of all time. One of my personal favorites. But he visited Coensburg, and they challenged him. And he realized, based on the description and based on the maps that he saw, there was no possible way to do it. So he decided to go about a way and describe this mathematically. 
Um, just as a side note, uh, a little bit of a definition here for your notes. What you just attempted to do uh, was something called a unicursal tracing. Um, unicursal tracing, um, well, basically, to trace um, drawing without lifting, uh, let's just call it the pencil, because obviously, you know, eh, it's not pencil. Pencil, pen, whatever the heck you're writing with, or retracing any of the lines. This is technically what you uh, attempted to do. You t attempted to do a unicursal tracing. I've seen various like games online where you have to do that. Um, some weird game like where you have to like slide your finger and fill up all of the grid without actually like cover or retracing yourself or some junk like that that is technically what uh, universal tracing is what this thing is and so euler he went about and he studied the Cohensburg bridge problem and he accidentally created a brand new branch of mathematics called graph theory on like just by complete not accident i should say but without even like you know looking to do so he discovered what is known as graph theory and graph theory is unbelievably important um just the idea of being able to trace a path an optimal path without backtracking over any of your own steps being able to um save on time and money and and fuel and whatever the heck you have to do um if you're a company that's delivering packages um or a mail truck that's delivering to uh people or, or a trash truck you know picking up all people's garbage you have to figure out an optimal path so that you're not wasting gas and wasting time and you're getting your job done that falls under the realm of graph theory. That is a mathematical branch. It's unbelievable. And that's exactly what this topic is about today, Euler paths and circuits. Now, Euler eventually figured out why it was impossible to do this, but I don't want to get into that just yet. First, I have to give a couple of definitions, and I want to get into um, what we're going to turn this actual Cohensburg picture into. It's going to be phenomenal, mainly for me, not for you. So, again, these are for my notes. These are for your notes as well. We can represent, represent Coedsburg as a graph. Consisting of vertices and edges. These vertices obviously are going to be dots, corners, whatever you want to call them on shapes. You've seen vertices, vertexi, or whatever the heck you want to call them. And edges are obviously going to be represented by lines. So if I talked about Cohensburg, and again, I'll kind of bring this picture back a little bit, each landmass represents a vertex and each bridge represents an edge. So we can represent it in a different way. I'm gonna dr just draw this picture as such with, a, with an A, a B, a C, and a D. This is kind of how the picture was. <laughs> Kyle, you cannot force people to like the stream. Although, yes, like the stream and subscribe and click the notification bell. Anyway, so, for example, C and D were only connected by one bridge. Now, this is just a graphical representation, um, or get timed out, yeah. Uh, this is just a graphical representation of that connection. Um, B and C were also connected by a single bridge. Um, a and D we're actually connected by two bridges. And to represent that, well, these connections don't have to be straight lines. They don't at all. Um, then, 
A and C were connected by a single bridge. And it looks like B and C were also connected by two bridges. This is a graphical representation of Cohensburg in the form of vertices and edges. Now, this is very helpful, and this is what most of our maps are going to look like over the course of this chapter. Um, I think in the discrete math textbook, which you guys don't have a textbook because I didn't really feel the need for you guys to get the textbook um, because there's so many resources online and I wasn't really even teaching directly out of the textbook. The um, This is like chapter, what, I don't even know, I think this is like chapter five or some chunk like that. Doesn't matter. Euler. Um, just as a side note, an edge, I'll put a little side note over here, an edge can connect to itself. That's a loop. And generally what that would look like is something like this, where it's like, there's A. Whee! It's connected to itself. It's ridiculous, but that's what the definition is. Oh, it's weird. Anyway. Now, I'm going to draw this very slightly differently. Now, if you notice, when I drew Cohensburg before, I did A, B, C, D. I tried to represent it like the actual map was. But you don't have to do it that way if you don't want to. You really don't. Um, I can have it as A, B, C, D, like some junk like that. And then it's like, okay, well, B and C were connected by one. D and C were connected by one. Uh, A and C were connected by one. Yeah. I could do A and D were actually connected by two, so I could do something like this if I wanted to. Uh, A and B were connected by two. I could do this if I wanted to. Now, I mean, it's a very similar setup to the other one. Obviously, even I have the letters in the same order, I could even mix up the order of the letters. In fact, let me do that real quick. Let's do it as like A... C, B, D. So I, I switched B and C. I just wanted to see what would happen with this. Because again, I don't know what this thing is going to look like. I'm making this up as I go along. So A and D are connected by one. Uh, B and uh, A and B are connected by two. I could do it like that if I wanted to. Cool. Uh, B and D are not connected at all. That's weird. A and C are connected. Uh, B and C are connected, but the problem is now, oh, C and D are connected. How do I do that? Oh, easy. There we go. This is the same thing. It looks terrible, but this is Cohensburg. So is this. And so is this. My point being is that the visual representation is changeable depending on where you place the vertices and what direction you put the edges. It doesn't matter. Some are more visually appealing than others. Like, I would say this is much more visually appealing than this, but they both do exactly the same thing, is my point. Again, this is an introduction uh, to this concept. Do, 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 do. Ya -da -da -da. Okay. Um, let's go with a little vocab. Now, I'm going to draw a little, rep a, a mini representation of Cohensburg over here, uh, just because I need the, uh, I need it to point to, if need be. So here is the mini representation of Cohensburg. I'm going to label the letters in a moment. There we go. A, B, C, and D. So, a few definitions before we um, talk about a few problems. Can you post the notes after on Google Classroom? Um, I can. Um, because I have a hard copy right here at my desk, I can easily just scan them in, and I can post uh, a CDF file. Um, obviously, seeing the notes definitely would be helpful. Um, hearing my voice is something else entirely. I know you all missed it terribly. You don't have to admit it. 
but you will. Anyway, um, so here's my representation right here. That's actually a good point. Maybe I should do that with like my notes for other classes. You know, Zach, you're the only one that has actually ever asked that. <laughs> That's actually a really good point. And now I'm like, hmm, maybe I should have done that for my other classes. Oh, well, they don't get it. But you guys will. So here's my mini representation of Coensburg. A um, few definitions. I have a little notepad for myself down below that you all can't see. But there is such a thing as what we call adjacent vertices. Adjacent vertices are just two vertices connected by an edge. Um, so, oh, A and D, they're adjacent vertices. Yay! Again, sometimes they'll refer to these things. It's just that you need to know exactly what you're talking about. There are also what we call adjacent edges. Super easy definition. Two edges connected by a vertex. Yeah, so, oh, okay, here's, here's one edge right here. This is actually what we call the AD edge, and it's connected by vertex A and D. Cool. Now, these are more important definitions. Degree of a vertex. The degree of the vertex is the number of edges at that vertex. So for example, uh, C, the degree of C is three because it has three edges connected to it. The degree of A is five because it has five edges connected to it. That's going to come into play later. That will definitely come into play later. Um, there are, we will refer to these as a vertex that is odd or even. Uh, basically, you would be odd if you're <laughs> an odd degree. And you would be even if you were an even degree. Easy, easy, easy definition. So A, because the degree was 5, it would be odd. Uh, D would be odd. B would be odd. Oh, they're all odd. Huh. Didn't think about that beforehand, but cool. Now, two more definitions, and I have a couple examples that I want to show you. I don't know if I want to put stars next to these just yet. Yeah, why not? Path. Now, there are two main words that are going to be used. Oh, stars. Oh, stars. Oh, sorry. I, I don't know what you were yelling about, but you missed the stars, apparently. <laughs> a path and a circuit. Those are the two main words in the title of this lesson. Now, I want to be very clear about this. A path is a sequence of vertices. I'm misspelling the word vertice. I probably am. Whatever, I'm a math teacher. I don't have to do that. Anyway, a sequence of vertices that can be traveled via edges without repeating an edge. Now, a path, this is not what I was asking you to do earlier with Coensburg. With Coensburg, I was asking you to go over every single edge, every single bridge. A path in general is just a sequence of vertices that can be traveled. So, for example, I could go A, B, C, D. That's a path. I'm done. Yeah, I know, Kyle. That's how you spell it. I'm a math teacher. I don't have to learn how to spell. Spelling wasn't uh, a class I had to take in college. So, screw that. Anyway. So, a path could have been, um, 
A C B A D A. Again, as long as you don't repeat an edge, it's a path. Now, I have not, it's not an Euler path. I'll talk about what an Euler path is a little bit later, but a path is just a sequence of vertices that can be traveled without repeating an edge. Whereas a circuit. Now, you're probably a bit more familiar with the word circuit, just in general. I mean, it could be an electronic circuit. Obviously, um, there has to be a beginning and an end to the whole thing. We'll deal with that. But basically, a circuit is same as a path, but you start and stop at the same vertex. You start and stop at the same vertex. Now, I have not defined Euler path or an Euler circuit, but this is just the general idea of a path and a circuit. You can describe any number of paths on this. I can describe any circuits on this too, if I wanted to. It's the same thing as a path, I just can't repeat an edge. I could go A, B, C, D, A. Done. There is a circuit. Cool. I could go A, B, A. There it is. That's a circuit. As long as I end up where I started, we're fine. And as long as I don't repeat any of the edges, we're good. That's the main difference between a circuit and a path. Couple of examples. So I'm going to draw this, and you can uh, visually try to do this yourself. Um, you can visually try to do this yourself. You could draw this yourself. It actually does help if you draw this so you don't have to, like, trace the computer screen or something like that, especially if my hand might be in the way. Uh, but let me just draw this as an example. I'm going to draw a few examples, actually. I'll draw a few examples. And I'm going to label each of these in a moment. Nope, one more. There it is. So there's A, B, C, D, and there's an E right in the middle. There is a connection point there. Let me draw it again, but with a little flare to the whole thing. Y'all missed that sound. I know you did. There's an A, B, C, D. E, Mr. Markey, it's the exact same thing. Yeah, give it a moment. Now it's different. Now it's much different. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> and let me draw one more down here. And I want to talk a little bit about how this plays into what we're doing. This is terribly drawn. It should not have been that tall. Doesn't affect my math, but gold star, if you can name this object. Just labeling these now, just kind of in a weird kind of pattern. There we go, bunch of letters. Can no one name what this object is? No. Doesn't matter, it didn't have to be tall or short. That's not the name of this object. I have no uh, mathematical proof as to whether or not this is an isosceles triangle or not. No guesses? Mm. No, you're all wrong. You're all wrong. Sorry, I'm just reading something while I'm talking to you. <laughs> uh, no, this is a Triforce. Get your head in the game. That's a Triforce. I'm drinking my coffee while I'm talking to you. <laughs> anyway, so let's talk about what we can do with these. So let's start with this first object right here. You were going to guess two triangles. <laughs> anyway, 
Let's talk about this object right here, the one that my pen is pointing to. So the general idea is, yes, you can create a path, and you can create a circuit. Um, a path could just be like A, B, done. There's a path. A, B, E, D, there's a path. As long as you don't go over an edge twice, you're fine. Let's talk about a circuit. A, B, C, D, A, there's a circuit. I, fin I, I have to start and stop at the same location as long as I don't, uh, as long as I don't go over the same edge twice, I'm fine. But now here's the real challenge. The real challenge. The Cohen's burden challenge. First, let's talk about a path. Can you come up with a path to this object where you go over every single edge once. This is your challenge. I'm going to go over the other objects in a moment, but I'm talking about this one right here. Can you come up with a path? Can you describe to me a path that goes over every single edge once? Now, you can um, name that path by the letters. Like, you could literally write out, okay, A, B, E, C, B. Like, you could do stuff like that. Um, but just try it out in your mind right now. I'll give you a moment to kind of think about that. Can you figure out a path where you go over every single edge exactly once? You're probably trying out a few different strategies. Starting at different locations. I mean, I would say A, B, C, D are very similar. E is the only main difference right there. The long and short of it is you can't do it. And I know you can't do it because I know the math behind it and I'm going to teach you that math. Try the same thing with this one. We'll switch it up. You can't do it with this one. I'll explain why later. What about this one? This one has more edges behind it. Give this one a shot. Start wherever you want. See if you can figure out a path where you go over every single edge exactly once do it. I'll try one with you in a moment and give you an opportunity. America. Anyway. <laughs> can't do it. You can't do it. You mathematically can't do it. I'll try it. Watch. Um, I'll start at A. A. Now I'll go over B. I'll go back to A. D. A. E. So I did these and I did these, D, uh, C, but if I go back, I'm going to be stuck. So, da, 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 oh no, I didn't do the, hmm, I got to go there and I'm, yeah, you can't do it. You can't do it. But now, mathematically, you can do it here. You can do it for this one, for the Triforce. If you were to attempt a path where you went over every single edge exactly once for this triangle, for the Triforce. You can do it. Give it a shot. I'm going to let my cat in the room while you forget. Give it a shot. All right. So I'm assuming you did one. Now, uh, just for the sake of argument, for those of you that are watching, tell me what you did for this, tri for this Triforce. Tell me the path that you followed where you hit every single edge exactly once. Type it into the chat, and I'm going to check a couple of them if you, if you have them. All you have to do is type in the letters, the, of, of the order of the letters that you followed.
Reading emails while I'm waiting for all of you. Come on, what was your path? What letters did you follow in order to get that one done? I did a thing and got the thing to do the thing that you asked us to do. Okay, Kyle. What letter did you start at? We're all waiting on him. <laughs> Good question. No, in all honesty. Like, for example, start at A. And type into the chat the, or the order that you could follow. Start at A. Go like A to, to what? You don't even have to put the word A, A to two. You just literally write out the letters like A, E, B. And then tell me what you did from there. Watch, I'll type one in. Whoop. Oh, here we go. Held for review. Show that one. Okay. Now I'm going to, Zach, I'm going to condense your path in a moment. But let's just see what you did here. So you did A, D, D, C. The school gave me a broken computer. <laughs> That's funny. A, D, D, C. Uh, you went C to F. So I'm just kind of trying to mark them off in my head now. So you went Froom to the bottom. Froom, Froom to the top. B, F, B, E. And then E, A. Okay, well, you did a circuit. You didn't hit any of the edges in the middle. You didn't hit any of the edges in the middle. Here, I'm going to type one in. I'm going to type one in. Into the chat, that is. The keys are all out of place. Really? That's weird. That is weird. I can't help you there. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of start what you did. So you did A, D, C, F, B, E. D, F, E. Is how I'll finish it. Look at that. So I just typed that into the chat. Watch what I'm doing here. So I, I did, I start, I, do, I did, almost did exactly what Zach started with, where I went A, D, C, F, B, E. Oh, but I didn't hit this actual edge down here. Oh, no. So I can't do that. That one's wrong. Can I delete that? I feel sad. Remove that. Haha, <laughs> message retracted. Let's try it again. What I just did actually didn't work, but there is a way to do it. There is a way to do it. Let's try it again. A, D, I got it. E, F, D, C, F, B, E, A. Look at that. That one should work. That one should work. Let's try that one now. A, D. Did I still not hit this one? Oh, I think I did. I think I did. Yes, I did at the end. A, D, E, F, D, C, F, B, E, A. There it is. I did it. That is what they call an Euler path. In fact, that is also what they call an Euler circuit, but I'm going to give you the definition of that in a little bit. In fact, you know what? Let me give you the definition right now. In my notes. What they call an Euler path is a path that passes through every edge exactly once. An Euler path is a path that passes through every edge exactly once. It's what they were trying to do with the Coensburg Bridge problem. They were trying to get everybody to pass over every single bridge exactly once. That's what this thing is doing. If that were possible, today they refer to that as an Euler path. Now, we also have what is known as an Euler circuit. I saw somebody join the chat. 
There's a couple people in here that haven't spoken yet. That's okay, you don't have to. It'll just be me, Kyle, and Zach for the time being. Somebody dropped in and gave a like and left, I think. <laughs> uh, that's okay. Again, uh, I think, Zach, uh, yesterday I had um, an Algebra 2 chat with... It was like verging on eight to nine people most of the time. I had a, an AP stat one that, like, went off the rails. That was pretty fun. That was... Really? All right, weird. Weird, weird, weird. Anyway, so back to that. Sorry. Euler circuit. An Euler circuit is basically an Euler path that starts and stops... Oh, that's right, you were in the AP stat one. At the same vertex. These are the pure definition of Euler path and Euler circuit. I have a couple other examples I want to draw. Because I have a little bit of a definition for you that's really going to help. There we go. Now, one thing I wanted to point out, I'm gonna draw two pictures, ones that you have seen before, but I'm not going to label the vertices. I'm not gonna label the vertices. I'm just going to put the dots for the vertices and I'm gonna show you how this whole Euler thing came into play. Okay, two pictures here. This vertex right here, one, two, three, it has a degree of three. So does this one, so does this one, so does this one. It has one uh, degree of four right in the middle because there's four edges being connected. Now let me do this one. Two, two, two. Again, number of edges connected to the vertice indicates the degree. Four, four, and four. What do you notice about the degree of each of the vertices from the image that you could not do a correct Euler path on versus one that you could? What do you notice about the degrees of the one where you could not, you could not do the Euler path here. Yeah, it's a triangle, Kyle. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the shape. Nothing to do with the shape. It has everything, oh, yeah, that was a square, with triangles on the inside. It has to do with the, with the degrees, though. Here's what it comes down to. Uh, there it is, sorry. I lost my train of thought, getting distracted by a cat. Euler circuit theorem. If every vertex is even, then Euler circuit is there. You just have to find it. Euler circuit theorem. If every vertex is even, then an Euler circuit's there. You got it. Yeah. Euler path theorem. Now, there is such a thing as an Euler path. If exactly two odd vertices, it has to be exactly two, then Euler path is there. Put a little note underneath. Start 
at one odd vertex finish at other. And I'm going to show you this in a couple exa of examples that I have set up um, in the uh, in the Google PDF that I have below for you guys, which we'll see that in a minute. I'm getting more emails. Ah, interesting. Silly emails. Anyway, so these two definitions we really need to remember. These two definitions we really, really, really need to remember. An Euler circuit, well, basically, if every single vertex is even, boom, you can do an Euler circuit. This one, it's nothing. This is not a path, or this is not an Euler path, this is not an Euler circuit. You can't do either one. For an Euler path to happen, you have to have exactly two odd vertices. Exactly two of them. Then you can figure out an Euler path. You'd have to start and stop at the same vertex. Again, remember the idea of these being Euler circuits and paths, you have to cross every single edge. You have to cross every single edge exactly once. Let's see a couple examples. So down below in the description, um, and you can click this at any time, there is a PDF that is available to you. And if you click that PDF, it takes you to well, the picture that I'm showing you right here. Now, I kind of blew this up a little bit. I made it a little bit bigger um, from the original version that I had. But I wanted to draw on this so that you could see exactly what I was working on. So I'm looking at A right here. Now, notice right here, I wrote a little one there. That's the degree of that vertex. That is the degree of that particular vertex. It's a one. Happy day. This is a two. This is a one, two, three, four. This is a one, two, three, four, four. This is a one, two, three. This is a one, two, three, four. Now, all this junk in the middle, because there are no vertices drawn, you cannot assume there's a vertice there. There will only be vertices at these dots. They have to be a darkened dot in order for it to be a vertex. So, it only has six vertices. No, no, not six. Ah, blast. And it's seven. That one right there. I missed it. Nobody told me. Sad days. But now, because I was able to label the degree of each of the vertices, I can tell you definitively that this one has no Euler path or circuit. Write that down, and I'm going to explain why in a moment. No Euler path or circuit. The reason why, and again, we could try it a couple different ways. Clearly, you see this one here, and you're going to be like, okay, well, if I'm going to do this, then I'm going to have to, uh, you know, I'm going to have to, like, start here or finish here. You know, cool. But the reason why I know that is because there's one, two, three odd edges. Or, I'm sorry, odd degrees. There's three odd degrees. In order for it to be an Euler path, it has to have exactly two. Exactly two. If it has more than that, it's not going to work. In order for it to be an Euler circuit, it had to have all even degrees. If it has an Euler path or circuit, then you have to find that Euler path or circuit. And we'll do that with a couple examples we have in the future. But that one, you can't do it. Let's look at B. Now, B is a nice one. But, now, I'm not actually going to draw on this one just yet. But this one is all odd. It has all odd vertices. This one has no Euler path or circuit either. It doesn't. Now, there is a process that I am going to show you in better detail another day called Eulerization or Eulerizing where you would have to figure out a way in order to turn this kind of picture, part B, into an Euler path or circuit. Now, again, the definition will come another time. Um, actually, you know what? Maybe I'll give you the definition. I'll give you the definition now, actually. And then we'll come back to this example. It's actually a really weird process. 
called Eulerizing. Basically, you add edges so that all vertices are even to create Euler circuit. Basically, you just add edges until you get all even vertices, and you got it. Phenomenal. Now, there is, again, an optimization that you could potentially do. Uh, technically, if you have to add vertices, you want to do the least number of vertices added. If you can help it, that's fine. But then there is something called semi-oilerizing. It's very similar, where you would add edges so that only two odd vertices remain. And once you have two odd vert or vertices, you are basically creating an Euler path. It's called semi-Eulerizing. It's a weird process. But this is what people do. If you Again, if you're a company, let's say you're a company that um, you run a trucking business. My father-in-law is a long-haul trucker. Um, he travels various parts of the country. Right now, he's just localized in the Northeast right now. Um, but this is what he, what they do. They, they basically figure out, okay, how are we going to scramble our trucks um, in such a way in order to maximize the amount of goods and foods and services that we deliver and minimize the amount of travel and gas that we would use or minimize the number of hours spent on the road. Graph theory. It's a phenomenal process. Um, graph theory is one of the things... I, I've taken a master's course before in, in this general concept of graph theory, and it, and it went way beyond what I'm teaching you right here. This is kind of like the basic nuts and bolts of it. This is the stuff that Euler um, discovered initially back in the 1700s. Now, let's go back to this B example. So now, again, the idea is, okay, well, where can I add vertices in order to Eulerize it, let's say? Again, every single one of them, every single one of them is an odd vertice, so it's not a path or a circuit. But... I can Eulerize. Eulerize. And I could Eulerize. Let me just, again, try to minimize this junk. I could add one there. I could add one there. Now, again, this could be a vertice, or it could not be. I don't have to have it be a vertice. I can just say, no, no more vertices. I'm not adding vertices. Again, the idea of Eulerizing or semi-Eulerizing is adding edges. You are not adding any more vertices. Think about like a trucking business. Again, if you're delivering to, what, eight different cities, you can't add an additional city right in the middle. You can't. We'll deal with that. Um, but now, boom, they're all even. Look, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Nailed it. But these on the outside, oh, no. Well, done. I have Eulerized it. I have Eulerized it. It is entirely possible to do an Euler circuit now. You just have to make sure that all of your vertices are even. Let's look at part C. Might do something different with part C right now. Let's see. Three, 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 three. Okay. Let's semi-Eulerize. If I were to semi-Eulerize, I would need... I'm trying to create some kind of a path. There's a starting point and a stopping point. I don't know. Let's pretend that... Okay, they're all odd. In order to semi-Eulerize, in order to create the path, I have to leave two odd vertices. Sometimes it does matter which ones. So maybe I wanted to start here, and maybe I wanted to stop here. In order to do the Euler path... If you're going to leave two odd vertices, you would 
uh, the two the two odd vertices would basically be your starting and stopping point. So let's just say I wanted to start here and stop here, which means I'm going to leave the two of them odd, but I need to make the other ones even. Some of you may automatically see, oh, I, okay, I could do that, I guess. I, I, anyway, watch, easiest way to do it. Add one there. I add one there. Boom, I have semi-oilerized. I have semi-oilerized. All I had to do was add those two, and I have semi-oilerized this thing. I got two odd vertices going on. These are weird examples. I love them so much. Let's look at this one. Now, for the time that we have, let me, uh, yeah, let me look at this one. I'm going to look at this one. This one's more fun. <laughs> I don't want to keep you forever, because I could talk about this forever, to be fair. Uh, but let's look at E. And it's probably getting closer to lunchtime for some. Oh, I'm sorry, Zach, breakfast time for some of you. You know. Anyway. Um, but let's take a look at some of this. Now, again, you ignore the ones in the middle because, you know, they're not actually edges. But look, this one's got three, 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 three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. They're all threes. It's not a path. It's not a circuit. It's neither. But I want to turn it into something. I want to turn it into something, and then I actually want to go out that path. And I'm going to show you with the marker in a moment the direction that I would pot potentially go with this thing. So if I need to figure this out... Oh, I forgot this one. Three. There we go. Let's see. I'm going to connect these two, and now they're fours. I'm going to connect these two, and now they're fours. I'm going to connect these two, and now they're fours. I'm going to connect these two, and now they're fours. I'm going to connect these two, and now they're fours. I'm going to connect these two, and now they're fours. Okay. I didn't have to do it like that. I did not have to do it like that at all. It just seemed the most logical to me. Now let me see if I can actually do this one. I'm going to try and go over every single edge exactly once. Uh, let's hope this works. So I'm going to do this in marker so I can't backtrack on this. I really hope I don't mess up here. Let's just see what happens. I go over that one. And then let's say I returned. And then I'm going to go here. And then here. Because again, I'm ignoring those in the middle. And then let's say I went here, here, here. Wait, where did I start? I started up here, didn't I? I think I did. Let's see what happens. Uh, go here. And here, and here, and then I gotta jump across here. Happy little tree. I never watched Bob Ross as a kid. I don't know if any of y'all did. I'm gonna go down here, and then 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 here. And then here, 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 and then here. Nailed it. Come on, that was impressive. I did not plan on that beforehand. <laughs> the number of likes should have gone up by like a million right now, but there's only four people watching. Hopefully those watching later on will put their likes on. <laughs> I'm actually really impressed with myself. I just want you to know I'm patting myself on the back right now. But yeah, I was able to create an Euler circuit by Eulerizing. Doesn't it seem doesn't it seem like I'm making all of this up? Like seriously, like I know I joke about that, but like this feels like I'm making all this stuff up. 
Even I'm skeptical of myself. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. So now, this one right here, F, right at the bottom. Let's get D. I don't want to come back to the D. Let's look at F. One thing you should notice about all of the all of the vertices. They're all even. They are all even. So, I'm going to leave this little challenge for you. I want to see what path you all took in the chat. Type in the order of the letters that you followed. The order of the letters that you followed. I just labeled them A through G. But type in the order of the letters that you followed in order to get that Euler circuit. Meaning, you hit every single edge exactly once. And because it's a circuit, mind you, they're all even, so you can do this. It is possible because every single vertice is even. You have to end up right back where you started. I'm going to give you a minute to do that while I go peek at my emails. Got some emails. Oh my. I'm just humming to myself now. I can hear my wife and my kids in the other room. My wife is trying to get them lunch. At least I think she is. Now, just for the sake of argument, I'll still accept answers to this one in a moment, and then I'm going to give you an example on my own. Um, for you... For those of you that are in discrete math, of course, I will be assigning something um, in regards to the information that I presented to you today. Um, very soon, probably either before the end, end of my work day today or early tomorrow morning or some junk like that. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Um, but I will have timestamps in this video. And yes, based on uh, Zach's suggestion, I will... I will scan in my notes uh, so that you had a copy of them and you're able to follow along so you don't have to write them all down. That would actually be very acceptable. Mm -hmm. Doesn't look like anyone will give an answer. How many vertices did I have last time? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's only 8 here. So let me try an example. Let me try this one on my own. Since no one can get an answer, let's see. Doesn't matter where you start. You can start wherever you want. Uh, let me start maybe at uh, A. So, and I'm going to mark these off as I go along. It's probably better that I do this in pencil. I don't have a pencil anywhere. Ooh, maybe I do. Huh, I do have a pencil. Look at me. I might shoot up pencil. Let's see, I could go A, B, C. Oh, let me write this down. Yeah, I can go A, B, C. Could I go all the way around? Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, let's just do that. <gasps> oh, did nobody call me out on that? Did nobody call me out on the fact that I labeled two of these vertices D? Kyle, where were you? I labeled two of these vertices D, and no one said a word. Kyle. Not even in this class. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Kyle. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Let me just go around. Oh, gosh, I'm tired. A, B, C, D. <laughs> E, F, 
Now I want to end up back at A. I think I can do that still. I can revisit A and then come back and then leave A again to go to H. Oh no, that's not going to work because I'm going to miss all these in the middle still. If I went all the way around like that, I'm really, I'm cutting off G. I never even went to G. So it's a good thing I did this in pencil. See, again, for you that are doing this on your own, for those of you that will be eventually doing this for assessments that I have for you, you are going to have to write out the letters of this example um, to get a proper answer. Let's try it again. Good thing I did not do this in marker. Let's go A, B, C just to start again. So I did that one, I did that one. Now B, I'm done with B. B, I'm never going to come back to. Let me go across, back to A, just to cut that off. Boom, I cut off that little triangle, as Kyle likes to say it's called. And let me go down to F, E, D, F, E, D. So I cut off E, E is done. Let me go back to F. And let me go up to G. So now I'm done with F completely. I have to go to D. I don't have a choice there. I'm going to go up to C. I'm going to go down to H. I'm going to go back up to A one last time. And there it is. Yeah. There it is. Absolutely. So then there were one, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There were 12 edges to go through. Yeah, there were 12 edges to go through. And then I went the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, and I went right back where I started. Nice. This is a nice Euler circuit. Excellent. <laughs> Put that aside for now. Anywho's it's yeah. So, um, like I said, I will have timestamps in the description. I'm going to put the timestamp of like this concludes my lesson for today. Just getting rid of some of the eraser marks that I had. This concludes my lesson for today. Um yeah. What are people doing even? Kyle, did you do my project yet? I'm going to assume you did my project. I have no idea. I, oh, this is actually be, <laughs> finishing it. It's just really funny because I looked away for a minute. And the, <laughs> I looked away for a minute. And the, for, the comment that I had seen was the last one you put at like 11.40, like four minutes ago, saying I didn't do it with an exclamation point. So I'm like, wait a minute. What? <laughs> that was weird. I don't know. All right, finishing it. Almost done. Yeah, you have about uh, 12 hours and 15 minutes to get it done. So you gotta get it done. Oh, I'm just stretching right now. Mm. I gotta do more of these live streams. I gotta get more of my, uh, my viewership up. Everyone should uh, subscribe right now if you haven't already subscribed and click that notification bell for fun lessons because that I'm going to be doing in math. Um, I'm thinking, I don't know when I'm going to do this. I probably should do this at some point, but I'm thinking I should do something like a, like a, like a live stream video game or something like that. Some, th something old school that my computer can handle or some junk. I don't know. What is this email? I don't like reading emails. Whatever. I don't like receiving emails. Anyway. Um, I hope... Oh, yeah. It would be cool. I don't know. Maybe I'll think about doing it when my kids are asleep or some junk like that. No, but then you got... Look. Are you guys awake at like 8 and 9 and 10, 11 o'clock at night? Like, are you guys like fully awake? Is that when you guys are like like the most awake? What time do teenagers even go to bed anymore? Are we... T like... What do you get about like two or three in the morning? Am I making this up? That just seems ridiculous to me. Like twelve? Interesting. <laughs> I 
That just seems... I don't know. Okay, when I was in college, I used to do junk like that. I used to stay up to, like, all sorts of weird times in the morning. I remember there was several nights in college in the dorms where we would, like, purposefully attempt to stay up all night long so when the sun came up, we could go to the dining hall and go eat breakfast and then go to bed. Like, that was, like, we, that was our thing that we did on, like, uh, on Friday nights or something like that. we do, like, a Saturday morning breakfast and then, like, go pass out in bed or something like that. Just, I don't even know. We'd stay up all night, like, just playing board games and cards and video games and junk like that. I don't know how we did that. <sighs> just seems ridiculous to me. Anywho. I don't know. Yeah, I have a video game set up. Um, on my computer, I have um, a USB uh, controller. It's very a, a junky one with normal skull. Usually, it's have them until two point playing box with boy, whatever. Playing Xbox with boys. Oh goodness. I don't know. <laughs> you guys are weird. Anyway. Um, yeah, I should be back with another live stream at some point this week. I don't know which class I'm going to do it for. Could be a surprise. But, uh, but yeah, I'm going to sign off for now. Like, share, subscribe. You do your thing. And, uh, like I said, I'll, I'll probably add the timestamps in. Um, I'll probably add the timestamps in this afternoon or some junk like that. Anywho, see y'all later.